overcoming cultural differences. That's where some of the International Graduate Student Association functions come into play. Talk to your peers. Um, it may be a difficult transition at first, but your colleagues have been here. They have done it before. They might give you little tricks and tweaks to the whole process. Be careful from an academic perspective where plagiarism is concerned. Any material that you cite or write in any document needs to be carefully cited and all the acknowledgement given or else you will get yourselves into serious trouble where that is concerned. Um, Drexel provide facilities to make sure you succeed. So there is the English language um, center, especially for international students that will help you, especially if you have difficulties with your English. You're here maybe for research. This is going to be requiring a thesis. Your advisor is going to um, help you dictate, or should I say dictate the terms on the what you should need to do to be successful in these cases. And of course, um, the grad college offers workshop for you to be a teaching assistant if you are going to be assigned one. This is primarily for those of you who are going to be a PhD student. Master's students are technically not going to be research or teaching assistants unless your particular program um, requires you to be one. So for your first quarter, just to kind of reiterate, make friends, try and settle all your thing, um, personal things as speedily as possible so that you can actually start focusing on your academic um, studies here. Join different peer groups, join different um, graduate student um, associations. If you do, do not see a particular association that you think might be interested, be bold and try and initiate actually the formation of these tricks actually as a formal structure for you to get these groups up and running. Um, get involved, as I mentioned before, be, get familiar with all the different resources that are available to you. And by all means, make sure you are able to manage your time properly. The number one goal is to be successful academically and at the same time, enjoying yourself while doing this. Please don't be afraid to get help if you're in trouble or you need assistance. Um, faces here that you will be seeing on the panel may be your go-to in the first stage until you get familiar in terms of um, what to do, how to navigate the systems here at Drexel. And by all means, please visit the graduate, Drexel Graduate College website and the IGSA website. The links are posted here in the, um, the slides. Have a safe flight, and I'm going to be turning you over to the panel for more direct, personal, one-on-one -on -one discussion. Thank you for the comprehensive presentation, Dr. Ryan. So at this time, I encourage all the participants to submit your questions through the group chat. So once you submit your question, I'll read them to the panelists so that they can address your inquiries. While we're making the transition, please kindly type in your question for us. So perhaps before we start, panelists, why don't we go around the, the table and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what your, what your office, office does, does and some creative facts. facts. Hi everyone, my name is Kia Glenn. I'm the Senior International Student Advisor for the International <laughs> Students and Scholars Services. Most of you who have joined the webinar today are probably arriving on an F1 or a J1 student visa. I'm sure there are a few of you that have other types which we at our office will also handle. So any of your particular specific immigration, non-immigration and international type questions would be directed towards our office. Even if it's just as simple as where do I go to eat? What can I do on campus? 
Um, what type of limitations do your particular visa hold? Um, we will be able to point you in the direction of the resources that you would be able to use, especially with some of our colleagues here. Um, and we can be your first line um, of defense or offense, if you want to look at it that way, as to where you need to be pointed while you're here at Drexel. If you do have any questions or maybe um, you're too shy to ask questions right now, please feel free to email us at the IFSS at drexel.edu email, which all of you have been openly communicating with. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Shane. I work in the health insurance and immunizations office. Our office is the main point of contact for compliance, health compliance here at Drexel. Any questions that you may have as it pertains to health insurance or complying with the immunization requirements, I'm the person that you would need to talk to or any other colleagues in our department. Um, you can definitely type your questions here in the chat or if you happen to think of any additional question or concern on a later date, you're more than welcome to send us an email. Our email address is healthimmu, that's H-E-A-L-T-H-I-M-M-U at drexel.edu. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Leanne. I'm a current student at Drexel. Um, I have, I'm working toward a PhD in economics. Um, if you have any question about life in Philadelphia, life at Drexel, how academic progress go, then I am able to help you with Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Shornendu Chatterjee. Uh, I'm secretary of IGSA. As you all know, IGSA is a, a small student body, and uh, uh, we are here to help the incoming uh, students to, you know, uh, help you regarding housing and uh, places to socialize or you know, uh, uh, places to move around. And uh, we have a couple of uh, events lining up. So uh, we are here to let you know about all those. So keep track of all the IGSA events and uh, we are looking, looking forward to meet you. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. My name is Shane. Um, I'm the second year uh, PhD student in the Laval Business College um, in accounting department. So if you are interested in uh, any stack related to the PhD's live study, I really want to be help. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to talk to you today, the new incoming graduate students, uh, fresh, fresh energy in the campus. My name is Saura. I'm the president of IGSA, and I'm also a PhD student, so I have been in your position two years before, and I, I have some answers for you, but if I don't have answers, I will direct your questions to some more capable hands. And as Shonendu mentioned, we have a lot of exciting events being planned right now for all of you. So you will be feeling very home here and you will have a great time here. I, I can be sure of it. Great, thank you for the introduction. So we have um, the first question from Chirag. It's about campus safety, and this, can, this question can be answered by anyone. So his question is, how does the campus security go and safety around campus? Can someone talk about a little bit of campus safety at Drexel? So uh, Drexel uh, have their own security officers uh, 24 hours working around the Drexel campus. So it's not only the Drexel buildings which are being protected, but also the neighborhoods, the nearby uh, neighborhoods where we have the Drexel um, uh, housing and also the off-campus housing. And uh, there are many services provided by this uh, Drexel security. Uh, there are some escort services, like at nights when you uh, are feeling uh, um, not so secure while walking alone back from your university to your uh, housing you can take the help of uh, this escort service and they will walk you along uh, from, from door to door. And uh, there are always security cars and security fans uh, going around uh, all the time. Uh, please don't feel overwhelmed. They can feel like uh, you see them more, but uh, they're always there to help us. Just to, just to add to that, um, just be, you know, Jason, Drexel has its own police station and its own public safety officers. So it's, uh, what should I say, coordinated activities. 
So it's well, we're living in a pretty large city and it's relatively secure in comparison to almost any other city here in the United States. Great, thank you. So Shana, this question is for you. Is PSI Health Insurance accepted by Drexel University? So here's the thing. Um, there are tons of different health insurance providers. Um, Drexel has a number of minimum requirements. So it's not that we accept one insurance provider over the other. It depends on what your insurance plan entails. So we have a list of minimum requirements on our website. Um, my suggestion and recommendation for you is to briefly look over our minimum requirements. It's a list of about um, 10 requirements. And you want to compare that to the insurance of your choice, the insurance of your interest. You want to see if whether or not PSI in this case, whether or not that plan covers the benefits that we outline. And if it does, then we will accept it. Thank you for the explanation. Um, the next question is, Shana, is also for you. How does the health insurance the university gives out as part of the scholarship works? Maybe it's not for you. So hold on. So I assume this person received a scholarship. How does he or she applies the scholarship money towards health insurance? Well, it's not like a stipend from university, or is it like scholarship from outside school? That's a great question. I guess we need to um, have more information. Catalina, Kat do you mind just you know um, elaborate on your question a little bit and then we'll just go to the next question and we'll come back to your question, okay? So this is from Jenny. How do we register for orientation? So this is a great question that I can answer. Um, I did send out a, a email invitation two weeks ago about orientation. As you already know, it's going to be, a, for the international orientation, it's going to be on Monday, September 17th. Follow that, it's going to be the university-wide orientation. To register for orientation, there is an app that you have to download. Just refer to the instructions in an email, and that registration link will not be available until around September 3rd. So that's how you register for orientation. All right, so the next question is from Mikhail. How easy is it as a PhD student to balance work and personal life? Uh, so I think you all are here, PhD students, so maybe some of us together can join. So, uh, telling my experience, so uh, the initial uh, quarter can be a bit uh, too much on the calendar because you will have to get adapted to the new coursework structure here because uh, we have a lot of assignments in the courses here and they are probably sometimes weekly or sometimes we have quizzes so initially uh, it, it will take one or two weeks for you to get to the speed but i'm sure once you feel uh feel the first first weeks you will feel very comfortable and you will definitely have your work time separated from your uh, leisure time and your personal time does do you have some more please um so for me, I think it's like depending on the department. Um, in our department, they study together is the key, Be especially doing homework. Because for the first quarter, I would have to spend like almost 20 hours a week doing homework and having, you know, a few of the, you know, colleagues or let's say classmates doing that with me helps a lot. I think the first the two uh, first the two years is very intensive. Uh, you need to finish the uh, study the courses and you need to handle the PA or RE jobs uh, assigned by your advisors. So uh, you need to prepare, provide some personal life in the first <laughs> two years. So it's very uh, dependent on your advisor. So you should be very clear to discuss your workload with your advisor. So the communication, like how much uh, you are able to do, some courses can be easier for some students, some courses can be much more time taking, you have to probably do much more reading in the library. So make sure you have a clear discuss, discussion with your, of your workload with the advisor to feel more comfortable with your schedule. Yes, I will also add to my uh, friends here. 
so uh, from the perspective of a phd student the first few quarters or first year is a uh, little bit stressful in terms of that uh, you need to uh, go through coursework and ts but once you get into ra then your life will be more settled and you will have time to balance your work life and studies and just to add to that um that question is kind of a tricky one because it depends on a number of different factors it may depend on your advisor it depends on your department it depends on your area of study it may depend on your personal study methods and the um situation is as most of your other peers indicated for your first year or two it's going to be focused primarily on maybe coursework or academics to get you up to the candidacy level once you have passed the candidacy that means you have now proven yourself worthy to be a phd candidate and to do phd research then it might become a little bit less hectic because now your attention is focused on research then again it's also boils down the, the type of research are you doing research that you collect uh, millions of data in one day and then do analysis for maybe a couple months or is it one that you're going to be on a day to day basis working in a lab so again it all depends on what you're doing and dr ryan while you're on the spotlight we have another question for you can you give us an example of a peer to peer program okay um uh, ones that used to be in existence um would have been like the ita program the which is international teachers um teaching assistance program if you were selected for that you would be coming in approximately a month before school starts going through the rigors of getting trained to be a, um an international teaching assistant and at the same time uh, uh what should i say pairing you with past students that would be able to walk you through or um help you transition from a student into a full-fledged um candidate so to speak um there are others that were implemented which would have been like the IGSA mentorship program which is a buddy type system but that was not continued for the past year or so so it all depends great yeah, so also have a peer to peer program it is called dragons to dragons you can find us um through our website or you can join the facebook group which is drexel university dragons to dragons if you can't locate either of those certainly send us an email and we will send you the links it is strictly a peer to peer program so you are buddied up with a fellow international student so they are the experts on knowing exactly what you're feeling right now prior to coming to Drexel we will be having a mixer where you'll get to meet your mentor if in fact you want it's a completely volunteer program so you don't have to sign up for dragons to dragons but if you choose to do so we will assign you with a particular peer basically a third or fourth year student um and we'll have a mixer where there's food beverages and games to get to know each other um probably welcome week or maybe the first few weeks of the term thank you kia and just a follow up question um for you dr ryan what did you mean by academic broker in your presentation okay those would be um like your advisors the ones that would be actually assisting you or directing you as to where what your coursework should be what your plan of studies should be what your research should be um you have a graduate advisor which would be focused from your academic perspective and you would also have a research advisor that would be overseeing your research your academic advisor normally is overseeing all graduate academic activities in your respective departments while your research advisor would be the person directly in charge of your research which would normally be your uh your put this way your formal advisor great thank you so we have a um a question about you know spam mail 
students are getting um, you know, emails about campus jobs opening. How do, they, how do they know if these emails are actually, actually genuine or real? I can certainly take this. I'm gonna go ahead and say 99.9% .9 of the time, all of those emails are spam. The reason being is you're an international student, which means you have a very limited opportunity to work in regards to legal work authorization. So before you click on anything or, can, or ever even consider taking any form of employment, I encourage you and employ your, implore you to come visit us and ask us first, because you certainly do not want to accidentally do something that could potentially jeopardize your visa status and ruin your time here at Drexel. We also have an entire page on our ISSS website, which tells you exactly what your opportunities are in regards to on-campus and off-campus employment. And just to add to that, please note, this includes volunteer work. So irrespective whether you're getting paid or not, you're volunteering or not, please speak to the ISSS office first before you accept anything. Thank you so much for the advice. Um, this question is about orientation dates. Again, the international graduate student orientation as well as the university-wide orientation will occur on Monday, September 17th. So, you know, be prepared. It's gonna be an all day event. Now, in addition, some departments, some academic departments may host their, you know, specific orientation as well. So it's, it's best for you to check with your academic advisors to see what those dates are. Here's the next question about registering for courses. Do we have to register courses for fall term or will it be done for us automatically? In our department, you need to register by yourself. Yeah, so you have to go in the uh, BB Learn uh, where you will have an option to browse through all the courses available for the fall term. You can browse through by the course name or the course code. So sometimes uh, your research advisor will uh, advise you for certain specific courses or you will have some mandatory courses to take in. So you have to register the courses, uh, I think, uh, by the first, first week or before you start your fall term. And uh, I think you have like one, one week's uh, time to skip. Uh, like if you want to change for, or jump from one course to another, you have like only one week's time. Like you can attend the classes and it doesn't fit you, then you can change to an, another course. Just just a minor, just a minor correction, not BB Learn. Drexel One is where you do all your course registrations through. And in I I would say almost one hundred percent of the time it's going to be you required to go in and register for these courses. The earlier you go in to log in to register, the more likely you are to get into a course because some courses have caps or limits and you don't want to wait until the last minute. Irrespective, you may have to talk to your academic advisors about which courses you need to sign up for before you actually start signing up. The other things may be you need prerequisite courses in order to be um, able to or eligible to uh, sign up for certain courses. Um, again, the experience is going to vary and I'll let the panel continue answering that question. And Sora mentioned that, you know, you can modify your course or courses within the first week of the term. And it's always the first Friday of the, of the quarter. So in this case, the fall term, the, um, the ad drop date is September 28th. It's Friday, September 28th. Yes. I yes. would want to add something here. Yes, please, Ms. Ramesh. Yeah. So uh, when I was here, I was registered by my academic advisor. The reason is you miss the dates before you come here because I joined here during the August month. So okay. you, I would rather suggest better talk to your academic advisor. What would they want to do when you for your very first fall or fall semester or your very first fall quarter? So make sure if they have registered you and if they haven't, then you can register it by yourself. Excellent. Thank you. All right, so the next question is from Mr. Miller. 
he'll be traveling with his family, um, you know, in, in, in the upcoming weeks. He wants to know if there's any economical housing options for a single family unit. Okay, I think I can answer that. So uh, Philadelphia is a huge city and there are plenty of options for housing. The trend is that closer you uh, come to the university, the higher uh, is the price. So my suggestion is if you uh, cannot find any unit in your budget, I would ask you to look beyond the uh, 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 you know, uh, university neighborhoods. You can look into uh, uh, suburbs of Philadelphia. Philadelphia has a very good uh, uh, connection of uh, public transit. Uh, I think uh, every part of the city is connected by trolleys or subways or bus stops. So you can find a place which could be a little bit far from university, but you can easily come by a uh, bus or subway. So uh, just to add to that, since we are in the urban campus, uh, we share our uh, 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 space with uh, UPenn and also uh, the Temple University. So uh, don't be afraid to uh, take any housing uh, in those locations because a lot of us, uh, like we stay like, like mixes uh, across the whole city. Great, thank you. So the next question is from Chirag. How do grad students um, look for opportunities like teaching assistantships, research assistantships, or graduate assistantship? If so, how do they go about looking for these um, type of um, positions? So uh, is it for masters or for PhD students? Let's just assume both masters and PhD. Let's start with masters. Uh, anyone? I, uh, Sora, I can actually yeah, answer yeah, this question. Sure. So actually I'm doing my master's and uh, for, uh, so I'll go one by one for an RA position. You need to, so for all these answers, my common answers will be be proactive. You need to first go talk to different departments that you're wishing to do an RA for a research assistantship. Uh, there are two RAs, one would be research assistantship, one would be residential assistantship. Uh, as I am sure, residential assistantship is for a work study position and would not be available for the international students. Uh, for the research, uh, research assistantship, I would rather recommend you to talk to different de uh, department heads. They would have an idea if there's any position, you can actually go and work, the in, work in their labs. And if they don't have, they will actually direct you to other labs. For the teaching positions, Drexel has a link. That's Drexel Jobs. I would, um, um, so you can actually just go into that. And uh, there will be all the uh, positions and the details about the teaching uh, positions you have there. Uh, and you can actually go directly meet with the person, get interviewed and get your work done. Um, for the other job positions, again, Drexel Jobs, you can uh, ask them. Uh, there are places like Rec Center, you have ELC, uh, those kind of places when international students are normally placed in. So you can to go talk to them, go talk to the front desk people there. They will actually guide you when is the opening date and when you can apply for those. Great. Uh, <clears throat> my suggestion is uh, you can talk with, if you are a master student, you can talk with, you, uh, with your advisor. Uh, sometimes um, the department manager may give some information to the advisor and the advisor may email everyone to see if anyone interesting to be a TA or RA, something like that. So the advisor may have the information uh, about the uh, similar job position. Yeah. Um, I want to add in more, uh, one more thing. So um, also depend on the department, they may have some requirement for TA, which is teaching assistant. You might have to take part in the ITA program prior to be a TA. So you might want to speak to your department to see what you can do and what your requirement for that position. Great, thank you. So this, I have a question about um, an email. So if you didn't, did not receive an email from me about orientation, please make sure you check your spam box. And if you don't see it in your spam box, you can always write to me. And my email address is T as in Tom, K as in King, another K, the number 22 at drexel.edu. Again, my email address is T, K, K, the number 22 at drexel.edu. 
So I have another question about the dragon cards. Do we need to get any documents before arriving in order to get the dragon cards? So in my email to everyone, um, you know, you can actually right now upload your picture through the dragon card office. So there's criteria guidelines, what you need to do in order to, you know, get your dragon card. So you can do this beforehand or you can do it when you arrived on campus. So my suggestion is that you should do it beforehand, which is right now. Submit a picture of you, make sure it's clear. And then you can pick up your dragon card upon your arrival to campus in September. So the next question is about course registration. Once you register for a couple of courses, is it possible to change it with another one? As Sora mentioned earlier, um, Yes, since the ad drop date is September, you can modify the course up until September 28th. So that is the ad drop date where you can modify a course by adding or subtracting. And uh, just to add, if you don't remember the date, it's you have one week from the start of a course or the start of a term to either add or drop or modify the courses you've signed up for. So after that one week, then you can't go in and do anything. You may have to, if the advisor is okay with it, change it um, via their assistance. But you have one week within which to do all these modifications. So after the ad drop period, you can withdraw from a course, but there will be a financial penalty and also you might want to need to check with ISSS to see if you can actually withdraw from a course. So from week two to week seven, you can withdraw from a course. Again, there's going to be a financial penalty. Plus, um, there's going to be a W on your academic transcript. So again, you have to check with your academic advisor, ISSS, you know, about withdrawing a course if you, need, if you ever need to go that route. And just to add to that... Be careful because as an international student, you must carry nine credits for the entire term. So if you sign up for a course, our courses that total nine credits and is dropping something, you might be out of academic standards from an immigration perspective. So then definitely you have to talk to IEEES. Um, so again, be careful about that. Great. The next question is from Sarah. She's a part-time online student. So she's here on a TN visa, and she has insurance through her employer. So she wants to know if she can opt out of the Drexel Health Insurance. If so, what is the procedure? So Drexel only requires full-time students to comply with the health insurance policy. So if you believe that you are very well indeed a, in a part-time program, then that requirement doesn't even apply to you and you won't have to go on the website to submit a waiver. That requirement is only for full-time students. My suggestion though, just to make sure, I would check with your advisor to ensure that you are in a part-time program because what happens sometimes, a lot of students may be in a full-time program, but may be taking part-time credits, but they are still considered to be in a full-time program, and they're listed as a full-time student. So in that way, you are technically considered a full-time student, even though you may be taking a lesser amount of credits. So if you aren't receiving any emails from our department pertaining to health insurance, then more than likely you are very well listed as a part-time student. But if I were in your position, I would confirm my status with my academic advisor to ensure that I am a part-time student and that requirement does not apply to me. Thank you, Shana. So I have a question for Mohammed. How do we search and apply for campus jobs? So we have a link on our ISSS webpage, which actually says on campus employment. It will directly link you to the on campus job postings. Now I will be the first to admit that it's not always up to date, 
So this might be another one of those instances where you need to be proactive. If you want to work in the Drexel Athletic Center, I encourage you to walk into the Athletic Center and say, hey, do you have any student employment position for internationals? And that goes for anywhere on campus. It could be the library. Maybe you're interested in working in, um, as a student ambassador if you're really outgoing and you want to give um, incoming students tours of the campus. You could even work in our Drexel bookstore. We have a Starbucks coffee shop in LeBeau. You could work for academic departments and even the residence halls. So the sky is the limit in regards to student employment positions here on campus. Um, but you are going to have to get out there and actually walk around and find the positions yourself because the online portal is not always up to date with those position openings. Thank you, Kia. All right, Muhammad, regarding to your other question about your information is not listed correctly in Drexel 1. You need to contact me right away so that we can work together and rectifying that, um, that information because we might, we also may need to um, notify ISSS too because that means the information on your I-20 is also listed incorrectly. So if you could, please write to me at TKK22 at drexel.edu. All right, the next question is, what are the deadlines to pay for courses for your, for your outstanding bill? Since we don't have a representative from Drexel Central here, I would certainly um, say to either just send the Drexel Central general email um, a message stating, hey, what are the deadlines? They are going to be listed on your Drexel One account, and you can also look on Drexel's website to find the e-billing structure and the payment deadlines as well. Generally, if you uh, finish the registration, you, you will re receive an email about the bills and the, the email will mention the due time for the payment. Great, thank you. So this question is actually for maybe for IGSA and ISSS. Is there a way to get in touch with other students coming to Drexel from a specific country? So we have not only the Dragons to Dragons peer mentor, but we also just have an ISSS open Facebook page. So that is for you to go ahead and join and just start the conversation saying, hey, my name is this, I am from this country, I am a first year master's student. Is there anyone else um, that is from this particular country that I could link up with and ask about the transitions into Philadelphia life? Um, so that's one way you could do it. Um, you could also come and visit us at our office, and whenever you attend Welcome Week, there are going to be student groups from a lot of different countries. Drexel has close to 400 different student activities and clubs, and chances are your country is going to be represented. So uh, we at IGSA are focusing on different events which can be organizing uh, across different cultures and across different uh, countries. So the main focus of such events are for mixing across the countries and find buddies within your countries and uh, your regions. So um, as, 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 as you know, we have uh, students from a variety of uh, countries and we, we have small clubs. Uh, sometimes we have uh, bigger clubs depending on how many students we have from that country. So reach out to us and you can find uh, uh, IGSA contacts in the Dragon Links. And once you're here, you will uh, see uh, banners and notice board uh, advertisement of different events. Uh, come to those events and you will surely make new friends from your regions and also across the globe. Yes, we also update our website with events um, almost weekly. We host Cultural Connection Hour, which is to help you get integrated with not only students from your particular country, but also integrating you into the diverse population that is here at Drexel. Currently, we have over 170 countries represented, so try not to stay secluded and only associate with students that are from your country. Try to branch out and learn about other cultures as well. We also host a Dine and Discover event every single quarter, which is where we host around 30 to 40 students 
um, and we go out into the city and we sit at a restaurant, which is a particular ethnic cuisine, and we will learn about that country. So far, we've done South Korea, we've done uh, West Africa, and we just recently did France. So those are um, fun ways to not only connect with international students here at Drexel, but we always invite domestic students as well. Also, I want to add to this, uh, most of the Drexel departments, academic departments, uh, uh, has a list of uh, graduate student names. So I would suggest you to just go over that uh, student directory and see if that uh, name belongs to your country. If if you if you find any, just feel free to email and, and ask if you have any questions. Great, thank you. Kia, this question is for you. What is the minimum hours that students, that international students can work per week? And what is the policy for working off campus? So on campus student employment, you can work 20 hours per week or less. So that is going to be considered part time for F1 and J1 visa holders. Any other um, employment that you would have needs to be on campus. Also make sure that whenever you're looking for employment on campus, that it is coded as student employment and not work study. Work study is a federally granted opportunity which is only for domestic students if you wish to find jobs off of campus you would need to apply for government work authorization and as an incoming student you may not be eligible for an entire year so the whole first year that you're here in the united states you most likely will not be eligible for off-campus work authorization unless you have a co-op opportunity built into your program. A lot of times I would just say to make an appointment with us because we need to sit down and have this bigger conversation. Off-campus employment can be very tricky. And also, um, as mentioned earlier, volunteer in regards to international students is considered employment, even though we have this word ingrained in our brains as it being volunteering. When it comes to international students, the U.S. government doesn't see it that way. So always visit the IFSS office before locking in any type of employment to make sure you're not going to accidentally do something wrong. Okay, great. Thanks, Kia. Um, so Sarah had a very good question, and thank you um, um, for answering um, her question, Sandra. So the question is, can I register for a class that I'm interested in, but it's not part of my plan of study or it's not on my um, registration course list? The answer is yes, but it's very important that you talk to your academic advisor to ensure that course will be counted towards your degree requirements. Because if it's not, then you're just, you know, wait, not that you're wasting $3,000, but it's not gonna apply towards your um, graduation requirement. So again, it's very important that you check, check with your academic advisor to make sure that course will be counted towards your um, you know, graduation requirements. All right, so the ne next question is, when do co-op workshops take place? Is there any registration required for it after arrival in the United States? So again, she's referring to the MS co-op workshops. So I know that everyone who's starting in the upcoming academic year, you will automatically be registered for this co-op course. I believe it's called Co-op 501. And anyone who's interested in going out on co-op, you are required to take this course in preparation for you know, the workforce. So again, it's gonna be done automatically. And again, this course is free and will not be charged um, towards your, um, your billing. And this course usually takes place in the winter term. So you, which means it's gonna be from January to March. And I believe it's not a 10 week course. It's only gonna be like five workshops out of the 10 weeks. All right, so here's the next question. Can we talk about how students can connect with other students from their home country before coming to Drexel? Where can they submit that information? 
So how do international students connect with others from their home country before coming to America? Uh, so the best way to connect is to uh, look for the names in, in social networking sites. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, go through the grad student directory. If you find any name, just look up into uh, uh, Facebook or uh, other sites if you can connect to them. Yeah, there are many websites uh, in Facebook. Uh, for example, we have a IGS website. Uh, there, there, there is a GSA website. And there are many sports websites in Facebook where you will find uh, students uh, signing up. Uh, the new ones will be probably the ones which are getting um, enrolled in the coming year. So you can get in touch with them. Uh, you can uh, communicate with them uh, directly in, in private messages or send a text through uh, some Drexel website. So that's one way. And once you come here, you will have many opportunities to uh, socialize and meet people from your regions. Um, just to kind of add to that, and I'm thinking what the question is about the before coming here is concerned. Uh, Drexel is not going to is not in a position to share other students information with other students so if you the best place is something that's already public available and the net social net, um, media websites would be the best options so unless you're here at drexel when we introduce you face to face in a particular program we're not going to be allowed to share it um, with you before you get here but I have seen a lot of students already opening up those conversations on the IS Facebook page. So a lot of students have this exact same inquiry. So if you go ahead and like our International Student and Scholar Services Facebook page, you can certainly start those connections prior to your arrival to the US. So what is the maximum months can graduate students do co-op? Um, this is a great question, Ravi. Um, the answer is either three or six months. And you can also go to the co-op website. It's drexel.edu forward slash co-op. And you'll find more information about graduate co-ops there. All right, this is a great question. Where can I find more information about co-op options in the USA? So this is going to be where you meet with your particular co-op advisor. You're going to be assigned a graduate co-op advisor through the Steinbright Career um, and Steinbright Career and Development Center, also known as SCDC. So they have um, colleagues there which will help you navigate the Drexel or Dragon Jobs um, website, which automatically filters for all international student co-op positions available here in the United States. The same SCDC office is going to be the ones that host that co-op 501 course that Taz had mentioned. Um, another good resource through SCDC is they're going to help build the resumes that you're going to have to send out. They'll also prep you for interview questions, make sure that your cover letter is up to date, and um, familiarize you with the American interview process and job process as a whole. Thank you, Kia. So is there any connection with other universities or colleges in Philadelphia in finding a co-op job? So does Drexel have any connection with other universities or colleges in Philadelphia in finding a co-op position? I've seen an increasing number of master's and PhD students um, received co-op positions at our neighbor university, the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you. Can you repeat once more about the checklist of people and places that international students need to visit once they arrive on campus? Um, it would not necessarily mean a physical visit per se as at least contact. So you may want to check in with the ISSS office. They would be required. I, you have to indicate that you're here in the country. And I think there is a 
online option to do this. You would definitely want to speak with your faculty advisor or your academic advisor, especially um, if you're in a master's program, which will direct you as to your plan of study. And of course, your research advisor, if you're in the PhD program, to indicate what you need to do for your research. Um, the others is more than likely just to familiarize yourself with, like, for example, the Graduate College um, office, meet the staff there, since they will be kind of overseeing all things graduate students. And of course, familiarize yourselves with the different um, resources available to you, aka the library or the Steinbright Center or the English Language Center. One more thing, um, if you are a PhD student or a math student, a math student coming here on uh, a scholarship like a stipend, you might want to visit the tax office because you are getting paid and you would have to fill out a tax uh, report. And if you're going to do that before you can do anything, all the forms will be available from the SSS office. So if you need to go to tax office or any other entity that is not Drexel related, please talk to someone in ISSS before you start doing anything. Uh, we at IGSA are trying to uh, make a small brochure for you for, as an information uh, about banking, about te telecommunication or the documents like so social security card. So we will circulate it in a couple of a couple of weeks, and I think that will be very helpful for you to, as a guidance for the things you need to do and where you can get them done. Yes. So things like bank accounts, utilities, those things may be okay for you to contact. Um, your bank accounts, if I'm not mistaken, what they will need is that your travel documents to in, your passport to indicate that you're international you should maybe not need a social security depending on the bank. If they ask you for those, then you may want to maybe talk to the ISSS office. If you're not getting a stipend or any form of compensation, you more than likely will not get a social security number. So just bear that those in mind um, as you come along. Great, thank you. So about um, I think maybe ISSS have something else to contribute to that. I was just going to mention that whenever we get a little bit closer to the start of the term, particularly within 30 days of the start dates of the semester and quarter, we will be sending out a handbook, a pre-arrival handbook, which will have tips and tricks to all of the things that we had just mentioned. Banking, we will also suggest a lot of the banks around the Philadelphia area that do not require all of those hoops to jump through, such as the social security number and such. Um, we will send out um, how to switch your cell phone coverage over and how to get an international plan. So this um, handbook will have a lot of those um, just tips on how to quickly and smoothly uh, get settled in, basically. So that'll be sent out 30 days prior to your start date. Thank you, Kia. So back to the question about co-ops. So at the graduate level, there's only one co-op advisor and his name is Ken Bora. And I have listed his contact information in the group chat. So you can find his information, phone number and email address in the group chat. And the question is for you, Kia. How does one make an appointment with ISSS office? Do they have to make an appointment or can they just do walk in? So for um, mostly the run of the mill questions or any type of general inquiries, we do have walk-in hours. Walk-in hours are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. and then Friday from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. If you are experiencing um, a complex issue or something that is just very specific to you, you can sign into your Drexel One account and under your My Success team, there will be a link to actually um, sign up or make an appointment. And that can also be said if you if you have classes during all of our walk-in times, just go ahead and schedule an appointment with us. We have multiple advisors and plenty of time to meet with you. Great, thank you, Kia. So are there any services such as the library services that Drexel students can access at other universities 
in the area. So in other words, um, do Drexel have connections with other universities where Drexel students can use their resources? Um, so I'm not sure if Drexel students can go to the UPenn library physically, but uh, in, in the Rex, they can? Yes. Okay, so, so we can. So mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, that's a great thing. And uh, apart from that, if you have some books or some research articles to loan and you don't find it in the Drexel library directly, oh. so you can go through interlibrary loan and you can put a request for a specific book or specific research paper, and you will generally get it shipped to the Drexel uh, main library here uh, in, in one week or so, and you can rent it just as any other books in Drexel library. Just to add to that, um, the inter Drexel's library is very robust and very proactive at doing things. Um, if you go to the library and you do not find what you're looking for, they have a portal which is online called the Interlibrary Loan, as Sarah just mentioned, that you put in the particulars for the book, article, or journal you're looking for, and they will go searching for it for you. Um, on the other end of spectrum, Penn literally is our next door neighbor and they actually allow us to share facilities. So you can walk in with your Drexel ID and they will allow you to even check out a text. Um, the trick is this, if that book that you just borrowed, one of the pen student needs it, they're going to tell you to carry it back immediately. So that's the only limitations. So yes, they might give you two weeks to carry it back, but by the time you step out through the door, another pen student need that book, you're gonna be emailed say, sorry, we need that book now. So that's the limitations for that. Great, thank you. So I have a student who wants to know, she received a scholarship. Does she need a SSN, a social security number, to receive the scholarship? So she was awarded a scholarship. In order to use a scholarship, does she need to have a social security number? So this could go one of two ways. Most of the time, no, you do not require a social security number to obtain your scholarship. However, a lot of our international students receive very hefty scholarships here at the university. And off the top of my head, I do not know the max the maximum number of the amount of money. But once you surpass a specific amount of money, the student will have to file taxes, so government taxes on that amount of scholarship, in which you would come visit the ISSS office and say, hey, I need to file my taxes because my scholarship is so much. It's saying that I require a social security number, but I don't have one, what's next? So if you have those questions, just immediately come have a sit down with one of us at the ISSS office and we will do some uh, research and investigation into your, your case and see whether or not you qualify. Thank you, Kia. I, I think as grad students, uh, uh, getting the social security card is one of the most important documents uh, you should get like in, in a month's time because it, it has to be next connected to your bank accounts although the student accounts don't need you to have the social security connected immediately but once you have your address uh, of uh, the housing you should uh, you should straight straight away go and get the social security card just to clarify if you are not offered any form of emoluments here you are not going to be given a social security number so again if you're not a phd student and more than likely a, a master's student even if it's a scholarship you might not be given a social security number so please talk to ISSS because not every student is going to be eligible for a social security number. Thank you. So this question is for anyone. Should students look for an apartment now before they come to the US or should they do it upon their arrival in the United States? So what, what would you recommend? So uh, it's always better to physically go and see the place. 
but uh, it really depends at what time you're coming if you're coming in august you have time to uh, see the place because most of the for most of the housing the lease starts from 1st september however if uh, you plan to come in september it's it's uh, good if you ask some of your friends to check the place for you and you can arrange uh, uh, for you know booking the place be be very careful about signing anything that you never saw because once you've signed on the dotted line for a lease you might be stuck with that lease and to pay the rent for the duration of the lease so if you can't physically be there to inspect and you have a colleague or a friend who is able to by all means but be careful about signing something that you never saw yourself so if you are searching for off campus housing i will recommend to go through the drexel off campus housing page a uh, lot of off campus uh, advertisements are put there most of them are like checked by someone at drexel so that's a bit more safer than just uh, going online and searching for the accommodations and uh, if you are searching uh, before you come i will recommend uh, looking in the uh, um, this uh, drexel's website and they have like some uh, uh, administrators like uh, Academic Properties, uh, INC, and some other uh, uh, management uh, websites, which are probably safer than just uh, individual uh, uh, options, which are just online. I think um, some of the graduate students would be looking for you know, a roommate right now. So you might want to talk to your department to see if any of the higher year would you know, have the space available, because if you Okay, uh, if you come to the U.S. and you need a place to stay right away, then you probably would need to, you know, rent before you come. Great, thank you. So the next question is about driver's license. I have someone who's already in the United States and he said his driver's license is expired. So how can he renew his driver's license and can he do it before the start of the new term? So this is a great question for us. So you will be using your new Drexel I-20. However, chances are the Pennsylvania DMV will not renew your license until you register or activate that new I-20. So you need to send ISSS at drexel.edu an email which states your situation. Hey, I want to renew my driver's license. I need to activate my new graduate I-20. We will then press a few magic buttons and you'll be able to go renew your license. Thank you, Kia. So panelists, um, while we're waiting, we'll just wait another minute or two to see, we to see if we have additional questions from our audience. In the meantime, is there anything you would like to add or contribute that we didn't talk about today? Just a few reminders, sorry. Shana. It's okay. Just a few reminders is to always keep an eye on your drexel.edu email accounts. As Taz mentioned earlier, a lot of our email blasts get immediately put into the junk or spam folders. Make sure you mark any type of Drexel communication as safe for your regular inbox. Chances are all of the communication that we are sending you is something very important, such as orientation dates, maybe something about your Drexel 1, your bill, your Dragon Card, anything. Um, and all of the orientation dates that are hosted by the ISSS department are mandatory. Mandatory means that you do not have a choice. The government requires your attendance there. And that's where your Dragon Card is going to come in. So you will need to receive your Dragon Card the moment you arrive to campus because you need to swipe in so we can track your attendance at those orientations. So no one asked about deadlines for health insurance or immunizations. Now, the deadline to enroll or waive, meaning you have your own health insurance and you would like to decline the health insurance offer through Drexel, the deadline is September 30th. We send multiple emails throughout the summer, um, way prior to the deadline, letting you know that you haven't complied yet. Make sure that you visit etnastudenthealth.com to enroll or waive if you happen to have your own health insurance plan. If you do not waive by the deadline, September 30th, you will be default enrolled into Drexel's health insurance plan, which means you will have a charge of $2,490, $450, 
on your account. So make sure that you, if you don't want Drexel's health insurance plan, that you do submit your waiver. Again, the deadline is September 30th. Now for immunizations, the deadline to submit your form is September 1st. We do not accept incomplete documents. So if by chance you still need to complete your form or you know that you're going to be fulfilling your requirements on a later date, just wait until your form is 100% complete and then you may upload your form through your Drexel One portal. Thank you, Shana. Shana, this question is actually for you. I have a student that says, my husband is working in the US and his insurance covers my insurance. Am I eligible for insurance waiver here at Drexel? Yes. So again, as long as if it's a if it's a health insurance plan within the United States and it meets our minimum requirements, absolutely. Thank you. Kia, this question may be for you. I do have a driver license issued by Ohio State. Can I just get a new one in Philly without passing the exam? Does anyone know? So every state in the United <laughs> States has its own driving requirements, driver's license requirements. So um, I suggest taking a look at our ISSS webpage for the driver's license list of requirements. So the state of Philadelphia is even different from the state of New Jersey, even though they're right next door. And I guess Ohio is technically our neighbor as well. So take a look at the requirements and yes, you will be able to renew the license. Um, and I'm about 99% sure that you will not have to take the driving exam. Thank you, Kian. This question is for you. What do you mean by activating I-20? So that just means that's the magic buttons I had mentioned earlier. You will be receiving an email in the coming weeks that says, hey, you must register your I-20. So right now, everyone is considered a pending status in regards to your immigration. So that could mean several things. You're in between programs, maybe you're a bachelor student that just graduated transitioning into a master's or a PhD program, so you're kind of in limbo. You're not quite a student yet because classes haven't started, or those of you who are back home in your home country, you're not here yet. So the moment you step foot in the United States, it is time to activate your I-20 status. So you will receive an automated email from us and it's a completely electronic process. You don't need to physically come into our office. You can certainly just submit everything through email and it's as easy as us clicking a button. You wake up the next day and your I-20 status is activated. Thank you, Kia. So the next question is, what kind of laws are applicable to us? Do we come under the Pennsylvania state laws? All you so you're in the United States. <laughs> yeah. So any and all uh, federal and state laws pertain to you as a Drexel student, as an international student, as a visitor in the United States. So this is going to be where we um, elaborate a bit more during the international orientation because I know it can be scary um, to think about all of the different laws, especially in a foreign country. Um, so we will have different partners across campus, including those security and public safety officers, um, come speak to you to make sure that you fully grasp the details of not only Drexel, um, campus laws, the community laws, and federal law. Thank you, Kia. So Dr. Ryan or the IGSA board, do you have anything else you want to add that we didn't talk about today? So uh, one thing which comes right out of my mind is uh, you, will, you will need a Windows computer for most of your uh, coursework here and uh, certain soft, soft softwares which need licensing. So if you go to uh, Drexel 1 uh, in the, under the community, I think there are some softwares which are university licensed, so like Microsoft Office, uh, there is software for MATLAB, I think also Mathematica, or there are some more options. So you may like to get them installed and uh, not don't worry about buying them individually. So that's a great resource. If you want to buy uh, computers, there are some student discounts available if you go through the Drexel, uh, Dragon, Drexel One portal. And uh, be sure that Drexel Library is a great resource here for studying uh, many times the textbooks, which you will probably need for your uh, courses are available there, maybe few copies. So if you really want to 
borrow the textbook you can like uh, rush and loan in, in the library there are many uh, study locations all across the campus so if you have a laptop you can sit anywhere and and do your study sessions and there are some rooms in 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 the library where you can do group discussions with some audio video uh, capacities so that will be very helpful and um, uh, look forward to a lot of events from IGSA. Uh, you, uh, there we are planning like almost one to two events every week along the fall and uh, the coming quarters. And uh, be uh, active uh, as much as possible uh, uh, non-academically because they are a great way of releasing stress, uh, especially because of this quarter schedule. Um, I just think of one thing. So um, Drexel have, or Drexel and UPenn have a Facebook page called Free and For Sale. So if you want to buy, you know, like housing stuff, a budget, then you might want to check that out because you know, Drexel selling. Like yep. Yeah. <laughs> we also have the mail list. Uh, oh. We can register, and then you can receive lots of information about use the uh, furniture. Or something else, uh, telephone play. Maybe you can share to me. I will share with the students. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I can find the link. Okay. Just kind of on a final note, just please check in with respective departments, in particular because we're international. You're international students. Check in with IEEE to make sure you are in good standings. Um, check with your advisors, make sure your insurance is up to date, and I will think you will be ready for a very successful um, term and the duration at Drexel. Get to know your peers, attend um, the student organization's events. That's where the networking comes into play. You'll be surprised that someone who is not in your department and not from your country might be doing work related to what you're doing and might give you different insights that will make your life a lot easier or simpler here at Drexel. Um, again, thank you for attending the webinars and please travel safely. Do not carry a lot of cash on you. If absolutely possible, do all of your transaction by bank transfers or transactions and just the minimum for you to actually get here safely. Um, again, welcome to Drexel University. And that concludes our program for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you for our participants. And thank you, Dr. Ryan, for your time. So everyone, have a safe trip coming in September, and we look forward to seeing you at orientation. Have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye.